wonderful to have you with us, Fernanda. Um, so everyone, yeah. yeah, thank you. So everyone uh, who's attending the session, it's fantastic to be, um, to have you all here. And uh, we are now on our last session for the first ever virtual Martignol Entrepreneurship event, which is actually the fourth edition this time. We've got, uh, we're in our fourth year and um, it's wonderful that Fernanda Tavares could join us uh, live from Brazil. So uh, it's wonderful. You're actually four hours behind us. So uh, thank I you. For <laughs> I couldn't really up. see any of the, any of the, the meetings before. But I'm here, you know. No, I'm that's very, fantastic. Very you can watch all the meetings live on Facebook later. I'll send you all the links, which will be, uh, they're really nice sessions. We had a good day of discussions uh, and it's, it's really, really good. Uh, awesome. You know, the, the points, the takeaways that came up, um, which we will be wrapping up in about uh, 28 minutes uh, with Miriam. So, but let me, uh, please allow me to introduce you, Fernanda. It's wonderful to have you with me. Uh, for those of uh, the audience, um, uh, very few in the audience who may not uh, know Fernanda uh, Tavares, um, she actually, I mean, it's amazing your story that you entered a mo modeling course at the age of nine. So you've really been focusing on developing your career since age nine when most people don't really know what they're going to be doing. And I found yeah. that story pretty amazing. And I know from your stories that from age 14, you really had to travel and do your schooling while you were traveling uh, with your mom, which was, you needed to have uh, a lot of persistence and resilience to be doing that and working the hours that you did um, while you were traveling around as a model and, and you know, so studying at the same time. Yeah. I'm sure it was not easy at all. We're complaining about online school now uh, with all the internet facilities and Wi-Fi, but at that time uh, yeah. you had far less tools so much easier oh my god it would be like beautiful but no we didn't no know. so kudos to you really well done and um you then at the age of 18 um became the cover of french vogue uh what a what a, an achievement um at such a young age that's pretty amazing and uh, for those of you who'd like to know more, I mean, Fernanda is a very public figure. You can actually look up uh, her bio online anywhere, but on our uh, Marknial Entrepreneurship uh, event page, you've got the, the bio of Fernanda Tavares. But I'd just like to point to a few interesting, I mean, you've um, been modeling for brands such as Victoria's Secret, Chanel, Versace, uh, Louis Vuitton, Giorgio Armani, uh, Salvatore Ferragamo. I mean, uh, reading that is really like reading an issue of Marie Claire Vogue. Uh, and it's uh, it's just pretty amazing what you you have done with your um, modeling career, and uh, you are, uh, are recognized as one of the first models to lead sex, the sexiest and healthiest beauty standard, which is wonderful to hear. You know, it's a combination um, that that uh, you know really attracted me, and you've also uh, continued uh, to be an anchor woman for uh, TV programs, MTV, uh, There's a Few, The Beleza uh, yeah. on the GNT channel, uh, and also supporting um, the Brazilian Institute for Cancer Control, uh, as well as um, supporting causes uh, uh, such as models should be the only foxes on the runway um, yeah. for the ethical yeah. treatment of animals. So you know, you're doing social impact um, work uh, with your uh, uh, public uh, yeah. figure. And uh, now you are a mother of two. Uh, and a two little angels, not, you know, like, <laughs> love them, joking. Yeah, we all love our children. It doesn't mean that, you know, they drive us nuts sometimes. No. Um, they, <laughs> you're married to <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, you're, you're married to actor Murilo Rosa and you have two beautiful boys. And I've had the pleasure of getting to know you um, when you first came uh, to our Martinelle branded hotels. And um, I had the pleasure of getting to know you then, which is wonderful. And uh, it's, it's a great um, honor for us to have you and Murillo as one of the first investors in our Martignol Residences project. So yeah, uh, we're so excited about. 
We're like counting hours, you know, counting the minutes. Oh, that's that's wonderful and you know um, both you and Murillo have had such nice things to say which I thank you um, and Murillo was one of the first visitors to our education hub when uh, we took him around to show him the future school when you come yeah. back now you will be amazed the school is so it's ready. opening ready. yeah opening in September 2020 so the last touches are going in that's uh, awesome yeah. oh my god we're yeah. so excited so excited so we're really yeah. excited about that so, um, Fernanda, over to you, and uh, uh, please do let us know a bit more about your career so far, and uh, you know, we'll talk a little bit about the challenges um, of being uh, a woman, a mother, and balancing um, I know. Not, uh, you know, professional work. It was work. never easy, you know, it was never easy, ever, and uh, I don't think it's changing. I think women are adapting, but it's not like getting easier, you know? But first of all, Shitra, it's such a nice, it's such a pleasure to be here with you. You and Roman are like, you know, I'm so glad we met you because you guys are awesome. And we had such a beautiful time in Portugal when we went to Martinhão with my family. Thank you. I really miss that. We really wanted to go there now for holidays. But, you know, for the whole situation in the world, that's not possible. We know, we all know that. Yeah. But, you know... We're really, really happy to have you guys as a friend and, uh, and to have now a place with you guys over there in Lisbon. You know, Thank you so much. Well. <laughs> Thank you. That's really, really kind. And we're looking forward <laughs> when we can all uh, celebrate, uh, you know, the, the opening of Martinial Residences in 2022. And uh, you will definitely be there with us. Yeah. Oh, please. We will. And uh, we will be there not knowing when we're coming back. <laughs> because we love, the place. Um, we love that place my husband loves that place it's gonna you know we're really excited about that no, that's great uh, to hear. yes and thank you for inviting me you know like uh, next to all these beautiful and awesome ladies there you know talking about so many important things uh it's a really pleasure to be part of this whole team you know, thank you so much. And to be talking about one one business, one career that if we really, if we really think about it, like stop to think about it, um, so different. It's like one of the fewest career that the women are on the top. You know, let's say like that. When I say top, it's like uh, above the, the men because we see most of the career, like if you go, every woman when they have like the same um job as the men yeah. they are not equal you know like the the yeah. woman has less um the the salary is much less yeah. you know the, they work more but they get less and modeling career is one of the the fewest that i know i don't know any other really but like that us women we are getting you know we get more paid than the men that's and that's for a little simple question i mean reason that is you know fashion is much more for women you know we love magazines we love yeah. um we love fashion we love we love how to dress today the men not today always you know men also like that but this it's it's growing little by little this situation for her for the men so i think like fashion for women is one of the fewest business that the woman that the women can say, oh my God, I really get, when they really work, they really get money. But it was when we start working because the, at the beginning is really difficult. Like you said, I was nine years old when I started um, in a modeling course. It was not really modeling career, you know? I always wanted to be a model. I was like, um, it was like the kids a dream. Like my son wants to be a policeman I want. I wanted to be a model. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Hopefully, he's not going to be a policeman. <laughs> oh my God! But you know, I never really thought that would be possible. I guess you know because it's just like I think every little girl has this dream. You know, like they want to be beautiful, they want to be an actress or a model. But then I had my mom that she always she always thought, mm, I want to have a daughter. 
so she can be a model. So also was <laughs> like my mom thoughts, you know? So I grow up with that feeling like, oh no. And I was very like um, vain, like, uh, you know, I liked to take care of myself and my hair when I was yep. four or five, but it was not bad because sometimes it can be really bad, you know, for like little kids when they take care too much of their body, when they see like, oh, I see like little girls saying, oh, I'm fat. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like they're five, six, you're not supposed to say that. So I was not worried about that, but I, I knew I liked myself. I thought it was That's beautiful. wonderful. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's great. So, I was very like, I loved putting like makeup and things. It was, and then I had the whole support of my mom. So when I had the chance, so when I was nine, she put him in this modeling course. And because, you know, I was tall, thin, and she also wanted that, but it was, it was not something she was pushing me like crazy. No, you have to start. You have to, you know, it was, everything was very um, normal. And then when I was about 14 years old, I did this modeling, um, like, um, challenge. No, I don't even say how, I don't even know how to say, but like, was this agents, they went to my hometown and they did this contest. They did this big contest. And then that's how I really started. And then they want me to go to Sao Paulo by the age I was 14. I was studying. So that was a very hard decision for me because yeah. I didn't want to stop studying. I know that my, uh, my school was like, you know, it was so important. I was never, I was not the best student ever. You know, I didn't like to study. It was not like, oh, I love school. I'm such a good student. No, but I knew that the school was the most important thing that I had at that age. So my mom, she was like, you know what? I'm going to support you, whatever you want. She, it was her dream to have a daughter to be a model, but the day I had the chance, she was not like, you have to go. You know, she gave me the, 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 the freedom. I, I, I was the one who was yeah. choosing, who was yeah. going to say yes or no, you know, it was not her. So we, we moved to, we we're like in Natal. So we moved to Sao Paulo. We we're in Natal. So we moved to Sao Paulo. And then I still, I was how many hours away is that just for people to understand? We took, we went by bus. That is like two days. By, oh. uh, yeah, if we took an airplane, it would be like three hours. But then, so it's you a know, huge distance. It's just to give people an idea. Pe most people yeah. don't realize how far Natal is from oh. Sao Paulo. And then we, we went by bus. And I yeah. remember when I got there, a few weeks later, I was at the agency and I saw all those girls complaining. Oh, I have to come from um, this other city, like three hours by bus to Sao Paulo. Oh, such a long trip, six hours in a bus. That's awful. I was like, excuse me? Six yeah. hours in a bus? It'd be like two days in a bus. And that was yeah. awesome, you know? So I love traveling by bus, by the way, you know, because I had such a good memories. And then it was hard. It was so hard. It was not like, you know, it was not like an easy uh, uh, easy life. It's not like people, easy people, people, I think, uh, look at photos and films and they think it's easy, uh, but they don't see all the hard work and the pain that you have to go through behind the scenes, you know? Oh yeah. No, 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 no. They only see like beautiful women on the covers of magazines. And they think that the girl, she was just, she just woke up. She was like, I'm going to be a mother and took her like a few weeks or a few months maybe yeah. to be there. And it's not, it's the whole, there is like a whole path, you know, like a whole way to go. And, and those girls that you see, it's like a little percentage of the girls yeah. who really try that, you know, because yeah. it's, it is really hard because we start by the age of around like maybe 14 years old or yeah. yeah, 14 is a good age to start. But a lot of the girls, they give up in a way because it's too hard, you know, yeah. it's too hard. It's like, um, they they ask you a lot like um, they it's like you have to be thin you have to be you know you have to wake up early you have to leave your family i was lucky enough to have my mom with me but people they don't you know so girls they have they they go by themselves to paris for the first time to yeah. new york and they share apartments with models yeah. and i have my mom to support me on that so when i went to sao paulo i stayed there one year and then I had to have to, to, to make a big decision. Then I had to stop going to school because my agents was like, oh, you have um, 
there is like uh, this opportunity to you to go to Paris and uh, but then they want you to be there for like um, a few months I was like yeah. what about school now you're gonna have to decide now for me Chitra that was like the that moment was like I was like what am I gonna yeah. Oh my God, what am I going to do? Because I was like, how am I going to stop? I was like, I was like 17 at the time. Not 17, no. When I had to, I was like 15. Gosh. And yeah. I was like, what? I'm going to stop studying because we, we have to catch, you know, maybe that's, there was a chance that I was having. We don't know. We have to try. Sure. Sure. So I, yeah. so we went, actually, I went with my mom, not to Paris, to Milan. Everything was wrong for life, for like, I spent, I remember I spent two years of my life. For me, it was missed, which now I know was not, it was supposed to be. But at that time I was like, God, I missed two years of my entire life. I missed the school. I missed my, my um, teenagers uh, years, you know, like my friends, my, uh, what did I do? Everything was wrong. And then when, when this, next chance gave came to me from my agents in brazil or like there was 1997 you know uh, i went to sao paulo 1995 so it was like five six there was already 1997 almost yeah. the third year and my agent he was like you know what there's this agency in paris they really like you and they want to they would like you to go there I was like in Paris, what am I going to do in Paris? Because girl, girls in Paris, I always heard they had to be so thin. And I had this long history of being overweight, which I was never overweight, but it was like, I was like, what am I going to do in Paris? Because I have a little butt, I have curves, I have, and I was a skinny. I'm talking about a skinny girl who had butt and curve, you know? <laughs> And I was like, why am I going to go there? But, and then I went, I, I was like, you know what? I'm going to give my, I'm going to give myself a last chance because I have nothing to lose anymore. You know, I missed two years of school. I didn't get money. I, you know, I don't have money in my bank account. Yeah. So I have nothing to lose, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I went there with my mom to Paris 1998. That was my last chance I gave to myself. <laughs> my <laughs> last shot. That <laughs> was when I did the called the, vo the Vogue cover, the French Vogue cover. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. With uh, Mario Testino. That was the big boom. I remember in, there was June, July. I remember uh, 1998, June, July of 1998. I had like three covers in Paris with me, like on those big billboards on the street, you know, like there was like three covers of magazine. And I was like, God, I was so like, oh, <laughs> that's amazing. That was your big break. In other words, because yeah. you know, there's so many, um, you know, parallels we can draw from being an entrepreneur to doing that. I mean, sometimes you're thinking, what am I doing? Those three years, what you consider to be lost years were the buildup to this moment yeah. this where moment. you got your big break. And they were like, I was just getting prepared for that. You know, yeah. it wouldn't happen if, that didn't happen before, you know? So that's why- Of course not, think, yeah, yeah. When I start to think, like I would do everything again exactly the way it was, because like you said, I was gonna, I was being built up for that moment, yeah. you know, getting prepared. I was 17 years old, I've been through so many things at that point, <clears throat> you know, tough moments, because it's really hard, Chitra, for a 15 year old girl, hear things that you hear like, oh no, no, your nose is too big. Don't yeah. you want to do surgery? Yeah. You know, so you're 14 or 15. You cannot I know. Hear. It's harsh. Don't know it's harsh. You're fat. And you know you're not fat, but yeah. you start believing you are. Gosh. Because you hear people saying that all the time, you know? So it's so really you, hard. Yeah, and you had to overcome these moments of criticism, of unfair words, uh, and uh, be continue to be confident and see your it's way through hard. It's uh, not for everybody you know? yeah and and i would just like to draw some parallels uh, to the entrepreneurial world because there are you know women uh, trying to get ahead in tech uh, female founders of businesses who are trying to raise funds um you know what i can get from your story is really you didn't give up i mean it was a young age to you know it's not easy and many people have to go through things that are not easy to get where they want to ultimately so this is an inspiration for me, really, to hear 
that at such a young age, you know, between the ages of 14 and 17, 18, almost, that you had to uh, go through those hard years. But then, you know, when you got your big break, um, it, it sort of paved the way, opened up the way for all your other opportunities, and you have made a successful career out of it. Um, you know, amazing story, really. That is great. Uh, yeah. I love it. I'm just conscious of the time. Um, my uh, team is telling me that you have a film to play. So it would be great to play the yeah. film now, perhaps, and then we come back to finishing the yeah, question. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. going to be fun to see those, those images. <laughs> OK, <laughs> great, Rosa. Amazing, um, amazing, oh. amazing imagery. <laughs> so, you know, years of hard work uh, and uh, many hours of preparation, I'm sure, to actually get those um, literally moments or just photos, uh, you know, what I've heard from um, um, other models. So I just wanted to highlight, uh, you know, people are trying to look for their passion in life. And I say, you need to find that passion and go for it. Um, yeah. I don't want to. I, I don't like stereotypes. Just as uh, you know, it's very interesting. You brought up this point that you know um, women in modeling make more money than men. So perhaps we have to work uh, for the men, male models, to actually get equality and uh, you know push yeah. forward. Men's yeah. fashion should, um, uh, you know, is really in reverse because all day we've been talking about how women are actually. Um, uh, yeah, sort of, you know, the diversity doesn't exist in so many companies or organizations or entities, whereas in modeling is the, the reverse way around. But, you know, I think it's amazing to hear what you had to go through in any case. And it sounds as though, you know, at the end of the day, if you put in your hard work uh, and you have, uh, you know, you work hard on your luck, <laughs> I always say good luck needs hard work too, yeah. you know. There's no doubt that we all need that big break or that luck. Um, we'll get there eventually. So, no, amazing photos. And you have it's luck. You have to persist, you yeah. know, because, like I said, like, uh, it's not easy. I wanted to give up so many times during yeah. this way that I, you know, during this path. I wanted to, I remember waking up and saying, I don't need that. You know, yeah. I, even when I, even after I done French Vogue cover, which was <laughs> beautiful cover, but didn't mean I was like uh, happy yeah. and, uh, and, you know, I was like, oh my God, I have everything now. No, because it's, it's still like, I was still doing, you know, my construction, like my whole career there. It was right. not like oh, cover, uh, cover. Of, no, 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 it's not the anything. pinnacle. It, it was only the start. In, a, in some words, and I in some way. so many times. And yeah. once again, I'm going to say I had the support of my mom with me. She was like, listen, I'm here for you, whatever you want to do, but think, you know, you have to think because, you know, you've been through, you've been through so many things. It's not easy and the blah, 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 blah. So yeah. I think the family support is so important, but you have to be lucky and you have to persist after that because it's not like, things are not going to come so easy to you, you know, in any career. So when Absolutely. you think everything is going wrong, oh, it's not working. If you really want to do that, if that's what you want, you have to persist. You know, you have to know until you really see that there is no way you lost all your money, whatever. I don't know. But, you know, yeah, but you have we, we talked about that this morning. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if you run out of cash, uh, then, you know, there is there's one thing that an entrepreneur um, has to 
you know, look at is the cash balance and, you know, cash is king. So, but uh, we have had uh, failures before, but the failures make you get up and go. And even if you give up on this business, there could be a professional career that you pursue. Uh, you know, many times in life, uh, in general, life is not a straight path either. You know, people have to get, get up again, dust themselves off and continue. So no, some great inspiring stories there. I just like to, we have four minutes left, Fernanda, and I'd just like to give our audience, um, you know, uh, two questions. Um, one is uh, being quoted as uh, a model with the healthiest beauty standard. What would you advise young women who are inspired by models? To not get crazy about this whole, uh, what you see, you know, like, uh, especially now, it, now it's different than a few years ago, because now we have social medias, you know, so everything's on, before it was only TV and magazines, now it's like social medias, everything we see is over, you know, like social medias, and now we have all, the, all those beautiful filters, like, uh, that we put on on our face no <laughs> nobody has wrinkles anymore everybody yeah. has like photoshop on their pictures don't think that's the you know that's the the model that's the the, the example for it you know uh because it's not you know doesn't mean that being the 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 having the beautiful body like you said like i am one of the first girls because when i started i was big all the girls were thin i've lost so many jaws because of that but once one designer, which was Donatella Versace, she she put she started putting me on her shoes as the body, you know, because I had Beautiful. all the yeah. the curves. and tight dresses ever, <laughs> you know, like my breasts were like here, my butt, but then when people started realize that that's also beautiful, you know, it's not like the thinner girl who is beautiful. Yeah. There's like all different kinds, and it's changing more and more. Yeah. Because at that time, I was the, ooh, which I see the pictures now, I was like, God, I was still thin, just because I have a little butt. <laughs> yeah. But today, yeah. you know, people are realizing that, no, you know, you can be any size, you can have your butt any size, you can be, you can have whatever, you know, cell, cell lights on your body, you can have stretch mark, anything, you're still yeah. beautiful. So don't, you, you have to feel beautiful, you have to be beautiful yourself not like don't try to think oh no i want to be like her yeah. or don't try to use other women as an example of what you want to be you know be you're going to be much happier accepting yeah. be yourself, confident yourself. and listen so, i'm saying that it was really hard to me it's still i wake up i have to say that to myself because it's still today we're like oh my god why what's happening but <laughs> hello wake up you're nice, you're beautiful, you're healthy, you know. Yeah. Don't and you have two wonderful yeah. sons, uh, you know, beautiful uh, a family, great husband, a great family. Yeah. yeah. Have yeah. to be happy, absolutely. And we're so lucky when we look at, you know, uh, we are privileged considering how many people are suffering so badly in this pandemic. Oh, yeah. For, Fernanda, it was great to talk to you. Um, time has run by and we, we have to start the next session, but thank you so much. I thought uh, it was too, I, I thought it was going to be so long and, no, and it's, it's quick. <laughs> it's very quick. Un beijo grande. Thank you so much uh, for joining thank us in Sao Paulo. So Thanks for inviting me for that. You know, it was supposed to be there in, in Lisbon, right? I know. Cascais, I mean, I but know. because of this whole thing, uh, no one could go there, but you're such a clever woman, and uh, we're here. Look, everybody, everybody is here. Thank you so much, and uh, Fernanda, see you soon. See you, Hopefully. Murilo, and the kids soon. Okay. Yeah. Ciao. Hopefully, I want to see you soon. Bye. See Thank you. you. Bye. Ciao. Okay, so now it's time for our wrap-up session, and I'd like to invite. Yes, uh, Miriam is here, and I'm just gonna turn a couple of things off here. I apologize. Okay, Miriam, here we are uh, for Great. the yes. session for this day that has gone by quite quickly. I Very quickly. <laughs> that's right, that's right. And I thought, you know, as I, was, I was for quite a few of the sessions, I was obviously in the background and moderating and, and, and really sort of trying to pull out some of the, the common themes or some of the insights or some of the sort of the, the, the threads that have run through all of those sessions, because actually, 
there are a lot of, I mean, we've just heard from Fernanda, the topic of really what she was talking about really yeah. was resilience. Yeah. The yeah. fact that you get knocked over, it's never a straight path. Yeah. Uh, you think, you know, if the moment ever comes, you think I've got this all sussed out, you can be sure there's another curveball waiting just yeah. around the corner. Around the corner. I haven't seen it yet. Um, yeah. So I thought maybe Chitra, if we, you know, if you use this last half an hour and just, and maybe just touch on each of the three panels and, sure. and have a bit of a chat about, you know, what you thought the key themes were. Yeah. I thought the key themes were. Um, and how about we kick off with the first one, uh, female entrepreneurship and the challenges uh, that, that women in, 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 in business or, you know, women who run their own businesses face. Um, and if I sort of summarize the key, the three key themes on that one, for me, there are four, well, three words and one sentence that stuck out. And the three words were first funding, the yep. second negotiation, the third one was guilt, and the fourth one, fourth one was ask for help. Yep. Um, so so the, the, first of all, the fact, I think, in terms of funding, um, that first of all, we still get less funding um, than men do. We don't uh, dare to ask for it. And I thought that was very interesting how um, that came out that actually it is in a way, I think it was Michelle who said it, it's in a way linked uh, to a very female trait, the sort of imposter syndrome and maybe feeling guilty of asking for funding because, and whether that's government funding, whether that's through uh, VC, uh, VCs, whether that is through, you know, raising funds through friends and family that we think, gosh, if I'm, if, if, if I screw this up and it's not going to work, you know, you feel guilty and you think you're letting other, other people down. And I don't know, I wonder whether men have the same feeling or whether they don't. Yeah, uh, I guess we're not men and we will <laughs> not really. Yeah, no. I think, um, um, I, you know, I've heard, uh, you know, I've been to several of these talks and, you know, uh, because uh, it's a pet passion of mine in any case. And mm -hmm. um, I think women who do sport and actually uh, this was it's a speaker, uh, a speaker who goes around the world giving talks about getting women more involved in sports as a way of getting them to be more entrepreneurial because when you're playing sport, you see that it's okay to fall down. It's okay to, mm -hmm. you know, lose. It's okay to get out there and be competitive and be more, you know, a little bit aggressive, I guess, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and just go for it, you, you know, um, as a way of preparing them uh, better. Um, and for... talking about preparing, actually, as that was a point that you raised about we just have to get cleverer at negotiation as well. And how can we prepare ourselves better for that? So, uh, you know, you were, you were saying, you know, how you dress up, um, but also how- That drew a comment, by the way. I knew it would be controversial. Oh, really? And on Facebook live stream, uh, someone said, oh, but we still, you know, need to change the, the, the perception of this. Absolutely right. I knew it would be controversial because, um, but that was my- way i mean i love those shirts and and uh, pantsuits anyway that's me so you know that's my image but and you um, get them from your sister and you don't even need to iron them so that's even more handy so <laughs> yeah yeah no it was so uh yeah system system of motion but um you know i i think the the point there is um this lack of guilt perhaps um is what uh makes uh I always say, I mean, makes a man, we have guilt, they don't seem to have it. Whether it's uh, fundraising, as you said, you know, the big ask or, uh, you know, to actually kickstart a business. And, and, I, and I wonder whether it's um, this female trait. I mean, you could hear this uh, also in the talk. So, you know, the mothers are the pillars of the family. Why not the fathers? You know, why can't they, uh, you know, take some of the tasks and feel guilty about them? Uh, and I always used to make fun of my husband uh, in a fun way because he's a great father and a great husband. Uh, mm -hmm. And actually, you know, men have to do a lot also to help uh, uh, the gender equality, uh, the topic of gender equality. And I'm lucky to have the husband I do. But I used to make fun of him. You know, he'd be happily reading the newspapers and <laughs> the, there'd be a war breaking out, you know, amongst the four children. And he'd just ignore it. He said, they need to learn. Chitra, you know, so I think live and let live is another, um, um, you know, sentence I would 
try to introduce to mothers, you can control every single thing. Yes, you have to be there for them. But honestly, when I look at some of the stuff I feel guilty about, um, later I'm thinking, you know, was it really worth that huge guilt trip? You know, you could have actually focused on uh, that piece of work you were doing. But look, it's, it's a, a huge balancing act, as we all know. And, you know, I just... Uh, uh, and especially with time, at that stage when they're little, you're constantly beating yourself up. I know you've been through yeah. it too. We all talk about it, no? Uh, but, you know, without, uh, we could use it as a, a positive too, right, Miriam? I mean, we've heard um, the, the, the sort of what, you know, the characteristics that make us great entrepreneurs, you know, the empathy, right. the humility, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and the lack of callousness, I'd like to say, <laughs> let's face it, you mentioned, I keep calling her Jacinta because in my head, she's a Jacinta, but she's Jacinda Ardern, okay, um, uh, uh, you know, versus Donald some Trump. Uh, other leaders, yes, of uh, great nations. And one big difference is definitely care, caring mm -hmm. versus callous, I would say. And, yeah. you know, perhaps this is a, um, a great trait uh, of a woman that actually makes us better entrepreneurs on well, uh, you, you know. are very nicely leading into what I had noted down actually on and uh, actually and we're jump uh, boy we're jumping a little bit here was one of the key things that came out for me about the second panel about uh, women in tech yep. um, was the question, are women the better tech entrepreneurs? And it's interesting because um, Ayumi, Sandra, Elisabetta, they all focused in on some common traits uh, that women share. Um, and they mentioned things like collaboration, uh, creativity and empathy. Uh, and, and do these traits first of all, make us a, a better entrepreneurs in general, but also why don't we use those traits to not worry about, oh gosh, you know, I haven't got a degree in math and I haven't got a degree in physics and how can I possibly be a tech entrepreneur? I think Elisabetta put it very well when she was yep. saying, I'm not a tech person per se. I, there are lots of transferable skills and actually a lot of the, I mean, you can't, I don't know if you can ever say, oh, women are like this and men are like that. We both dislike stereotyping, but I think there are some traits that are perhaps more prevalent than yeah. women. That's yeah. just the way it yes. is. You know, men are from <laughs> Mars and women are from Venus. Philippa uh, brought that up and, uh, you know, it, it's uh, true. Otherwise, a book wouldn't have been written about it. So mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, definitely these traits, um, you know, uh, uh, I think suit tech uh, tech startup in so many ways. And I think we need to get rid of this idea that, uh, you know, oh, we're, we're actually not, you know, tech entrepreneurs. Tech impacts business, all business, and therefore we're all in tech. We all, ha you know, are there. We have to understand tech. And, um, you know, I, I loved as a badass thing about, yeah, the high expectations of AI, because, you know, I always say this, and we expect AI to take, take over the world and I can't get an answer uh, from, you know, my purchase uh, from whoever with a yeah. security tag on it. I mean, honestly, I don't think that AI is ready to take over the world yet. And um, that algorithms are biased. That's a very important point. I found point. that a very interesting, very interesting point. That was actually a point I had no idea. I'd never come across that before, but of course it's logical once you hear it. And, uh, you know, that we need diversity on all fronts, not just men versus women, but women of color, men of color. Um, you know, we, we heard that from one of the panels after that, you know, um, in the social impact uh, entrepreneurism, that it's not just the two genders, you know, there's um, so many other LGBT and transgenders, you know, that are being discriminated against yeah. uh, in, 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 in the business world as well. And, um, um, you and know, we were talking about special tension. needs, special needs help uh, children. But, you know, I think what was interesting uh, that came out of this get out of your comfort zone. That's what I was hearing from uh, that panel, the, the women in tech panel, get out of your comfort zone, uh, whatever it is, if you're going to have seven careers in your life anyway. I mean, I should get back into coding. I, di I didn't really, I wasn't g a gifted uh, programmer when I was at university, which is why I swapped to optoelectronics um, because I, I like physical electronics more. But uh, perhaps I should go back to coding school. I'm going to go to that Casa do Impacto for some coding lessons. Exactly. <laughs> Do something that's out of your, outside of your comfort zone. And actually, the, the, you were touching on uh, diversity earlier on. And yeah. of course, 
we all know, um, you know, we don't even have to look, you know, Femtech, obviously that was a, that was a, that was a big, um, big yeah. topic. But even if you just look at the medicines that are out there at the moment, they test on men, they, they, they're made for men, they are very rarely tested on women, very rarely tested on children. Yeah. Uh, and so by, by not having women in tech, we are uh, not creating the products that this society needs. And, and like you were saying, you could, you could expand that. It's not just men and women, it's, um, you know, minorities of color or it's yeah. it, it's 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 um you know we heard about people with disabilities if 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 everything in this world is designed primarily by men of course they will bring and it's i don't think there's anyone to blame and i don't think there's anybody's fault but of course you will always bring your own experience into this yeah. And there was an interesting article, which you know I sent you from The Telegraph, yeah. about why our UK government has handled this so, the COVID crisis so disastrously. There are hardly any women in there. And there is no, I think there's no women, no working woman in the cabinet that also has children. So there's that voice of... And no one of colour. I, I remember this funny, uh, you know, interview with Matt Hancock as well, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so diversity is key, and I love Zabetta's reference to the beauty and the geek, you know, that we needed uh, both um, the fashionistas as well as the programmers. You're not going to get the answer just from the data scientists. You got to yeah. bring in the, and, you know, that connected sort of in my head um, to Daniela Braga, um, mm -hmm. uh, this founder of this business, um, uh, you know, she's a linguist. Uh, She's a linguistics expert, actually, you know, and uh, she's one of the, um, you know, recognized tech entrepreneurs uh, in Portugal. Um, uh, and I think a great example of what uh, they were all talking about, you know, whether it's femtech or whether it's, uh, you know, a language app, uh, you know, better translation, you need all sides and to look at it from different angles is not just about programming. It's not just about the coding. No, because no. yeah. I, I, as you know, I also studied, studied linguistics yeah. and, and, and what was then in the infancy, we then called it computer linguistics. It's actually right. for AI. Um, and, and I swapped from literature, which I, I used to love reading literature and then almost university beat it out of me. And I found myself much more drawn towards linguistics because I felt you can much more, you can analyze things, you can see patterns, but it's interesting because I would never describe myself as a techie person as such, but it's, um, and I, I thought that was very interesting, exactly like you're saying how Elisabetta mentioned, um, yeah you know, you take somebody who's very creative and you need to have, I think she was saying, you need to have two things uh, that you're good at, I, 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 I recall. So it's not just the arts you're interested, in, but you should also take yourself out of the comfort, your comfort zone and, uh, and get really good at something that's perhaps slightly outside of your comfort zone. Although I really also like what that panel was saying around schools yeah. and education and the fact that why do we focus still so much in our school systems on the areas that we're not good at yes rather than celebrating the ones we're really good at of course we have to get to a basic standard in all of the rest yeah but why do we think like that why can we not encourage children to really become super super good at the things they're already naturally leaning towards and i think that sort of tied in uh, interestingly i mean you know this was covered in different panels, you know, cross panels, mm. uh, but, uh, you know, it was beautifully brought together by Fernanda in the end. I mean, this is where I say we shouldn't stereotype, but neither should we discourage if, uh, you know, a boy is great at, you know, I always say cross, you know, <laughs> if he's great at cooking, my gosh, you know, some of the best chefs in the world are, are men. And uh, someone brought, uh, who was it? Michelle brought the example of a hairstylist her father, yeah. um, you know, the, the traditional roles are, are blending, but, uh, you know, uh, look at Fernanda, she wanted to be a model and she went to modeling school at age nine and she became great at it. The common thread through all of it is discover your, follow your true passion and work really hard at it, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, have the resilience to get through it. You have to be persistent um, as well. Mm -hmm. And I think there are a lot of lessons uh, uh, to be learned from um, her career and that was that was what uh, you know a nice thing for us to hear her story wasn't it um, yeah. relating yeah. to 
the entrepreneurship event. Absolutely. And I think it's, a, it's again, it, you know, I thought also Michelle's story was, you know, it was a very op open and honest uh, story. And I think we talk about failure uh, far, yeah. too, far too little yeah. and far too negatively. It was interesting to see that it's coming from somebody who's from Ireland, because as you know, I come from Germany and I've always felt that uh, Germans talk even less about failure. Um, right. And actually Brits, in, Amer in America, maybe it's slightly different. Yeah. It's almost like you start something, it doesn't go quite right. Okay, you make something else and you do it better. Yeah. Um, and I always thought that the Brits and the Irish were sort of more towards that end of the spectrum, whereas, you know, coming from Germany and, you know, border to Switzerland. Um, yeah, maybe, it's, it's interesting yeah, because last year in our entrepreneurship event, um, the third one, by the way, all these videos are available on our Martignal playlist on, on our YouTube channel and there are separate play, playlists for the talks in each different year. Uh, um, and last year we had a fantastic uh, Irish entrepreneur, a lady uh, who spoke about failure actually, and you know, how it was an epic failure and what she learned out of it. So exactly. um, it's a very important thing. And you know, one of the things uh, we really want to bring in to the school is an understanding of entrepreneurship from a much younger age for mm. kids because you know the school system is also geared towards oh you know you need to get, hit that grade you need to make that mark and you know somehow uh you know if you do badly in a test it's a big deal mm. but you you know my, i always tell my kids you got to learn from the important thing is not that you did you know well in a test actually if you do badly i just want to know that you've learned from it you know have you done the corrections you know what uh, this means and you know what perspectives have you missed um rather yeah. than looking at oh it was good grade bad grade Having so i think this mindset really yeah That's mindset great. you know the growth mindset you know is very important and i think you know teaching lessons uh, about entre entrepreneurship from a young age um has got to include you know you could well fall down a huge percentage of entrepreneurial ventures actually don't make it out there a huge no. percentage and so, um, you know, they've got to be ready for that and open to that. And once you're, you know, over the barrier and you get back up, you know, get onto your, uh, you know, another career or profession or another venture, you know, yeah. you're much and better. And like we've seen as well, you know, with bringing us to the third panel, actually our uh, social impact entrepreneurship uh, panel, um, almost all of them started out with something else you know I'm not saying none of them at least I don't know none of them yeah. are failed at something else but I suppose it again shows the transferable skills and for me there were two or three things that s stood out and I don't know what stood out for me but the first one was about how do we become change agents you know yeah. how, why do we, what makes us change um, and, and one of the things that I, that I sort of, when I was reading in preparation for, for the event today was change requires pain without pain, you don't change because what's the need, um, to change if there is no pain. And I think, uh, we, we've seen, you know, with, with Philippa, um, who has a child who's got down syndrome, you know, of course that's a, like, you know, like, like, uh, one of the speakers said, of course, when that first hits you, you know, it's pain. It's something to deal with. And then she's, it's amazing how she's turned that experience into something really positive that impacts not just her child's life, but also that of many others. Um, so, so I think that was, that was one thing. Change requires pain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also the other thing is none of them, and this is something actually that is in common with many women who start businesses, most women aren't driven by profit first. And in particular, of course, social impact entrepreneurs, they're driven by, they see a challenge, a problem, um, you know, a need. They want to address a need, uh, like I said, a social problem, an environmental problem, and want to make it better. So I think those are the two things that stood out for me. Yeah, um, yeah I think um, uh, it's very important for us to look into the future uh, you know, economists are looking at happiness index indices. Um, you know, they're looking at, you know, elements of sort of a sustainability um, uh, factor, you know, for the business. Uh, you know, things are changing so rapidly uh, that we can't just look at, um, you know, internal rates of returns and returns on investment. ROIs, IRRs are not the 
only things you should look at. I mean, obviously, a business has to be profitable, um, you know, uh, but uh, in order to really uh, create a successful business, um, you need to look at a sort of what I call a balanced scorecard. I know it's used for, you know, a, another model in, in management, but it's almost a balanced scorecard um, uh, that, you know, dictates the, the future success of the business. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's no better time to look at it than the pandemic because it's changing so many of our business models and uh, yeah. uh you know uh interestingly susanna you know said this year has been uh, a huge year for her and i know um you know she she has invested in in um, efforts to bring water to you know parts of africa and mm -hmm. uh, she's done so many other things and uh, for her to hear her say this was like the, the biggest year of impact for her because so many things happened, you know, the Australian wildfires and, and then seeing her friend's son in hospital with the um, coronavirus. So it's a time for change. I mean, pain is what uh, uh, is an agent for change. So perhaps it is a time to look at, um, you know, what we need to change in our businesses. Um, yeah. And we're all facing tough times, but we're all getting up and looking forward and, you know, recognizing that there'll be three tough years um, and trying to look beyond uh, these times. Exactly. Um, I think but, the other thing, talking about that this is sort of the year of change and actually it's something that's been long coming. And, and I think it's obviously accelerated certain trends that were already there. Um, I can't remember what it was. Inesh or Philippa or Harsha who said it, um, but one of them said um, one thing that's really, really important to remember, it starts with the consumer, it starts with us. So it's not, we can't sit around and wait and hope for our governments, although it would be great if there was, you know, support out there and a will to drive through change as well. But it really starts with us as a consumer, with the choices we make, with what we consume or what we not consume as well because i think that's certainly another thing for me i've got a whole wardrobe full of clothes you know do i really need more probably not um so so to really think you know consume more mindfully or just think actually i don't need it at all do i really need it yeah it reminds me of uh, my sister's um you know driver for creating her fashion brand um system of motion uh, was that fast fashion was just unsustainable. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it was the push to a sustainable lean wardrobe was one of the drivers for her to create a new product. Um, so, yeah, it's, um, you know, we as consumers have to vote with our wallets, as they say, <laughs> right? right. Um, so, I mean, but, you know, amazing panels. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I really wish that uh, I could, I'm going to go back and listen to all of them again on Facebook live stream because when I'm taking notes and trying to, you know, figure out, you know, making the comments, I'm, I'm missing uh, sort of, you know, key points and uh, yeah. it's a pity Philippa's presentation. Um, she didn't realize that the presentation was not showing. I'm, uh, I've got to get that presentation from her to actually have a look through it myself. Um, but uh, we've got five minutes left and uh, Miriam. I have Sorry. Yeah, go on. Let's. Uh, I have something, uh, something slightly light-hearted and fun prepared, which I'm going to spring on you now. Um, right. Because I, I thought, you know, obviously we've heard from lots of lots of other entrepreneurs, but we haven't really heard very much from from you and your own your own thoughts. And so I thought, um, I have two questions here, and my question would be, who is the person you most admire in business, and why? And also, if that happens to be a man, why do you think that is? is it a woman? Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, for, first of all, I would like to say that I actually uh, admire my father uh, most in business. I mean, he used to say all the time growing up, we used to hear his uh, uh, stories being shared, you know, after he came home, you know, we called him, oh, it's great to share your stories now. We heard all the hardships he was going through actually live every evening. Um, and at that time I didn't realize what, what, it, what was happening. You know, it was sort of getting into my, you know, hardwiring me. Uh, he actually said, you know, um, it's, it's a tough life being an entrepreneur. You know, you really should, you know, get far in your education, go the corporate route. And, you know, at that time it was cool to be a banker, <laughs> I don't, you know, and, um, <clears throat> but, I really admire him because, you know, he's, I've seen in his 80 years, he turned 80 uh, a couple of days back and 
he has reinvented himself. You know, we talk about pivoting now. He mm-hmm. had to pivot so many times. He lost his fortunes twice over, uh, had to restart again. And um, I must say, uh, it, you know, uh, they make an amazing couple, but he was the driving force in that relationship. He was the driving force. You know, I usually find this one a uh, person yeah. who's stronger than the other, right? In a couple. Um, and uh, my mother uh, took care of all the aspects of comfort, love. He, she supported him in, in the business mm-hmm. uh, world as well. And she went out there. And funnily enough, you talk about, you know, competences. Uh, and they made a good team, actually. Mm-hmm. He was good on uh, many things. She was really, really good on the things he was not. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I would have to say uh, I really do admire him as the driving force behind the businesses. And especially because he went through not just financial troubles and had to get back up. He had, you know, a terrible accident five years ago, but then mm-hmm. was in hospital for months. He came out of hospital and lo- continued to launch a, a project with my brother that he had, you know, been working on before at age 75. So, you know, I really must say, um, yes, I admire him because he's my father. Now, uh, the question as to which business woman inspired me from an early age, um, I would say, you know, most of the, peop- the women who inspired me at a young age when I was little were actually political figures, because I guess that's what, you know, we, our discussions were about, Indra Gandhi, Margaret Thatcher, Golda Meir. Um, uh, and my father was very into, inter- you know, politics and world politics. So I guess, you know, you are formed by what you hear at home. Yeah. Uh, and, um, but uh, I was given a book when I was actually uh, 22. I, I remember uh, about Anita Roddick, the body mm-hmm. shop book. And it was interesting hearing Sabetta mention uh, uh, Anita Roddick earlier. She was one of the f- uh, first at that time. I mean, you got to think of eras, right? This was in the 90s. And, you know, I was at Price Waterhouse doing, uh, preparing to become a chartered accountant. And uh, thinking about eventually going into business, leaving the corporate world, but it took me some more years to do that, to get qualified and then do my MBA. And Anita Roddick uh, was an amazing woman. Um, you know, as Zabetta said, you know, she put her money where her mouth is and you know, she was talking about social impact entrepreneurism and sustainability Already. long before, long before, you know, many other people were. So um, uh, that was one of the books that actually changed my life in a sense. I actually started thinking about becoming an entrepreneur after that, funnily enough, because of all the hammering I'd heard, had from my father about, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, you should, you should go the corporate route. I suddenly thought, wow, yeah, you know, I can also do this. You know, let me finish my accountancy degree. So yes, there are many more, there were many more stories about men. There's no doubt, but you know, uh, I guess women should use and that's one of the things we've heard use role models that are around you and they can be from other industries or professions they don't have to be female entrepreneurs i i often think you know well oprah winfrey is a businesswoman but you know what what a great businesswoman oprah winfrey is or what a great leader uh you know and how often was she turned down i remember reading a story i think when she first pitched uh, the the format for her talk show i think everybody said you've lost your marbles yeah absolutely uh, and, and these inspiring stories have a lot to do with the persistence, resilience, and getting up again. You know, if you hear yeah. these stories, Mother Teresa last year. So, you know, I want to talk about that picture that's behind me. You know, I'm not some egotistical, you know, person to put a portrait of me behind. That was actually a present from my husband, um, but it was from uh, last year's McNeil Entrepreneurship Event when we had uh, these pop art figures of all the speakers, uh, but uh, as well as, you know, leading female figures uh, that were inspiring to us, you know, around the room. Um, and, you know, get your inspiration from various role models, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, they can be as old as, uh, old as Mother Teresa um, uh, uh, or as young as Greta. So, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I think, Chitra, we are out of time. I know, I know. We've gone on for a little while longer. So, um, first of all, you know, thank you very much for putting it on again. Um, obviously, we're looking forward to the next edition, the fifth edition next year. Yes. I'm very much hoping um, that it's going to be a, a real, you know, much as it's great to try new yeah. things and, and do it, you know, virtually and online. But um, you know, let's hope that next year we are all able to to, to meet again for the fifth to edition. To meet again. Absolutely. I hope so. And Miriam, thank you so much. And uh, 
you know, thank you for uh, being with us for these uh, 10 years, uh, uh, you know, by our side, helping us, uh, helping us market, uh, uh, you know, and do the PR for us and the, and the sales in the UK market. And we're looking uh, forward to better times for sure, for all of us. And, you know, together we'll get through this and it's a hopeful, hopeful note for the future uh, that uh, we as women together can also make the change. So thank you all. Watch all this on live stream uh, on the Facebook. You can click on our um, uh, Facebook at, at Martignal on Facebook and uh, actually look at the different, uh, watch again, the different live streams throughout the day. Do share our stories and let's make this world a better place. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you everyone.